Hey boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dub Dog and I are gonna give you a little bit of a shop tour slash shop update. We've been here for one year now, so I'm gonna show you some of the things we've done, some of the things we need to do, and uh, some of the things that have changed since we've been here. So let's just jump right into it and I'll show you what we got going on. All right, we'll start in the corner of the shop here. I think the lift was here when we did the first uh, tour. This is a 12,000 pound forward lift. I got a 12,000 pound because you never know when you might be lifting up a big old screw cab dually long box or service truck or something. That thing has been freaking awesome. I love it. I wish we had two of them. I wish we had room for two of them, but we don't. Well, I like keeping this lane open here or the option to keep it open so we can drive the 40 foot uh, gooseneck and trailer through it or whatever else, but it gets plugged up a little bit, but I don't want to put a lift over there so that that's in the way of even though we could probably sneak a pickup and trailer through that. Uh, the Buick pretty much just needs to be cleaned up. Uh, I need to flip the rotors around because in my video today, people commented that, yeah, you got the rotors wrong left to right. Well, I have never had fancy rotors and yeah, I didn't look at that. 50, 50, 90 rule, which means you got 50, 50 odds, you're wrong 90% of the time. So here I am wrong again. I do want to put some bigger tires on the back, uh, maybe go with some eight inch wheels, just get a little more meat in there. And uh, that tire on that side is pretty bald for some reason. I got these bulk oil tanks we haven't filled up yet. Uh, we're starting to do some oil changes on a fleet of vehicles for a fleet company. So we might get involved with filling those up. Otherwise we can probably just get rid of them because they're taking up space. Kind of, we put, we added this shelf here and it's a good spot to keep oil and everything. Uh, you'll notice I've just been going gangbusters on totes. We got totes there with different greases, coolants, odds and ends. It's kind of a catch-all corner here. I wish we had some more shelving to store stuff. Used oil tank, uh, that really hasn't changed. We do have some funnels and whatnot. Uh, the controls for my lift, hoist, whatever, is on the right-hand side. And usually that's what they say is when they set these up, you get out of the car for simplicity. You get out of the car, slide the arms on this side, come over to this side, slide them underneath, and then you raise it up. But it seems like I'm always working on the driver's side and going up and down more times than not. So if I were to do it over again, I would put this on the driver's side. Isn't that big a deal? It'd be really cool if they had controls on either side. This thing is just held up by magnets, the funnel buddy. We need to screw that to the lift or find a better spot for it. The old English stump is five gallon bucket holder. Picked up one of these drain pan things for whatever oil. That thing's super handy for doing oil changes or working on rear diffs, whatever. Keep a little cardboard box over here for throwing trash in. Instead of having like a full size trash can, it's nice, it's out of the way. Uh, keep the jacks over here. That torch is almost always over here. Like I said, totes galore. All these totes have, not all of them, but a lot of them, like that's for the Buick, that's for the 63 Impala, that's for the Bronco, yada, yada, yada. We got room for some more. We got a bunch of uh, aluminum intake manifolds. I need to hang those on a wall somewhere or hang them from the rafters or whatever. I just, there's nothing great. There's a couple of tri-powers in there that are kind of neat for small block Chevys, but otherwise it's just regular run-of-the-mill performers and torquers and yada, yada, yada. That rigid vac is really good. The only thing I don't like about it is it's so big and bulky. A little bit bigger than I want. Yep, we're still working on the uh, crew cab. Got to do, uh, put the dash in it. We got some AC we're going to put in it. Got to do cruise control. Still looking for a 88 to 94 bench rear seat to put in it. Yeah, and just a, a few other things. It's pretty much ready to go. I did get the tool and got the windshield installed, what I call properly. Got some new wipers on it. It needs a good cleaning. Uh, this cart I stole from home. This is a bunch of 389 Pontiac parts for a mysterious project we can't talk about. I need to run airlines. I need to get a, a scissor lift and run airlines. This max line is what I had in my old shop. So we got some drops. We don't have any air on this wall in the shop. And then I got a stereo and speakers that we need to do at the same time. Have had those for a while. We got a hose reel, a couple hose reels. We need to get those in it. Got a bunch of wheels going on up there. So yeah, this is stuff that we need to do to the shop yet. And then we need to hang those up. And we need to put the chimney cover thinger back on outside. We went all winter without it because we're not smart. Chop saw over here, hardly ever use that thing. I bought this US General Toolbox and I bought a bunch of Harbor Freight tools just to fill it up for like when people are over here working on their own stuff. I got some buddies come work on their own stuff. And then we got a young man that is in high school. He comes out, 
and uh, sweeps the floor, and we give him some odds and ends. So that's kind of his toolbox. Picked up this iron worker. I think it's a Dvorak is the brand. Yeah, Dvorak Machine Company, Cosmos, Minnesota. I think we dated this thing as 1962 and older or 58 and older. Anyway, this thing is awesome. Mojo resealed the cylinder, and we put a hydraulic hose on it. I think we put a belt on it because I think there's a belt-driven pump. It's uh, single phase, 220, but we can shear. We can punch holes, like 3 8 holes. They make different dies for this, but all we have is a 3 8 die. We can cut angle iron, and we can shear flat metal. This thing is freaking awesome. It's nice. It's quiet. Leaves a nice clean cut. The metal's nice and cool when you uh, take it out. So, yeah, this thing is way good. Got a sweet deal on it. We're buying some other stuff from a gentleman. I saw that in the corner. He's like, I don't know nothing about it. We assumed it was three phase. We're going to have to convert it. Got it home. Put a plug on it. And pretty much just cleaned it up. So this is Mojo's kind of pride and joy. So we got his decal on it. Hit us up. Mortski.com if you uh, want to get your own Mojo Craft decal. Uh, this is uh, my toolbox. I keep a bunch of random stuff in it. We got our scrapers. You can get those on Mortski.com. We got some decals we got on Mortski.com. These are some new ones that I haven't told you guys about. The old Mortski Low Life. I think those are available on Mortski.com. Uh, more scrapers. Yeah, and then we got this lift. Uh, once we get the 63 video done, we're going to kind of do an all-inclusive video, like start to finish. That's how I like to do my videos, even though it's really hard. So you guys have been seeing this in the background. Everybody's screaming, I want to see the 63. What's with the 63? 63, 63, 63. We are getting close. As you can see, we're putting the exhaust on it now. We still got to put some trim on it. Uh, we got to put a wire harness in it and then pretty much just put fluids in it and this thing will be drivable anyway. But we work with Wildfire. We got this lift. This thing is super awesome. It lifts higher than my two posts. So it's nice for taller folks like me. Gets her up in the air. And then it's got this air over hydraulic scissor jack for lifting it up. Uh, there's a like a trolley that goes underneath so you can put a floor jack on that if you need to or you can put a drain pan or whatever This is really nice for doing like stuff like exhausts and oil changes uh, Transmission swaps stuff like that. It's not so amazing for doing like brake jobs and stuff But it's definitely doable. These things are a lot more affordable than two post lifts and plus they're portable You can set it down on the ground and there's wheels that go underneath you can roll it around your shop You can't roll it around with a car on it obviously and then it's a uh, 110 powered, whereas that forward lift is 220, so you don't have to hardwire it in. We did sneak some LED lights underneath it. We got them just uh, mounted up by magnets because it's nice because we can store a car on there. And then like we've had the F1 underneath it and we are working on that. So it's really nice to have that lighting because it gets super dark under here. Again, this wall is just kind of a catch all. There's a what my old welding, two welding tables stacked up just catching stuff. Oh, yeah. Also on Morse we got screw them drivers with a magnet on the end. We got Bic pens, not just any pens, they're Bics. There you go, there's the pens. And then we got old school keychains. We got all that stuff, but wait, there's more. But I'm not done yet. We got air fresheners as well, two-sided. So all that stuff's available on Mortski.com. Uh, since I'm talking about that stuff, we have brought uh, one style of shirts, the Mountain Dew green and uh, red logo. We're shipping those out in-house. We're doing a bunch of these decals and screwdrivers and a bunch of this stuff that we only do in-house. There's a couple of sticker designs that we only do in-house as well. So check that out, Morski.com. We're trying to cut out the middleman and bring some of that stuff in in-house to, uh, you know, be able to fund some of these other projects and shop upgrades and all that so we appreciate it uh if you guys support us but i mean you can go on the shopify site that's listed in the description below and get your stuff on there there's a lot more shirt selections but that's the problem with doing it in-house is we don't have the space the time the capabilities of doing a million different shirts and short sleeve long sleeve sweatshirt colors you name it so we're just going to start small and uh, we're going to ramp up from there. We'll see how things go. So, but so far, everything's going good. We're getting it figured out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a learning curve. So if you'd support us on there, that is great. Again, like I said, this is kind of where all the catch-all is in this corner. This is the bad corner of the shop. Not the bad corner, not the worst corner, but Jack stands on that bench. This bench is just kind of catching F1 stuff. This was in the box of it. We cleaned it out. I picked up an Amco, I think this is a 4,000. Are they 4,000s or are they 2,000s? 
4,000. Uh, brake lathe. Picked one up at an auction for, I think I paid like four or 500 bucks for it. Uh, we cleaned it all up, worked really good. A buddy told me about one for like 50 or 100 bucks. We brought it home. It was nicer than the other one, so that's the one we have now. And we sold the other one, sold it for 500 bucks, didn't make any money on it, just sent it out to a guy that we know, and uh, he's using it. So, yeah, we got all kinds of tooling for it. Mojo loves doing stuff on this thing. Looks like he was doing rotors last, but we've done a ton of brake drums, but we can also do rotors and we can probably do all kinds of neat stuff. Yeah, the old uh, Powermatic 140 bandsaw gets used a little bit. TIG welder, I don't think we've even plugged it in since we've been here. Tranny jack we've used a little bit. Uh, this old engine stand that uh, tried to tear my finger off is probably gonna get retired to the storage building. This is the real bad corner. I got this magnetic brake from my dad. Uh, to borrow it, I was gonna do the floor pans in the 56. We needed to get to that yet, but that's a Bailey magnetic unit. It's pretty swanky, I guess. Haven't even tried it yet. Another cart for catching stuff. Uh, the lathe, we actually, I've used it a few times. Mojo's used it a couple times. I think we talked about that square body, K5 blazer quarter panel, hanging that up in a video. This is Mojo's toolbox. He was working out of just a little carry around like a lunchbox toolbox. I picked this up, my buddy was selling it, and I said, yeah, I'll take it. I was gonna give it to Chin. Mojo laid claim to it, so now it's Mojo's. It's, uh, I don't know, some dragster snap-on toolbox, something or other. He likes it, so everybody wins. Now uh, the run stand, we had that flathead on it last with a bunch of blown out valves. We need to put something else in that. Otherwise kick it out here because it takes up a bunch of space. We got some grills we gotta hang up yet. Uh, 34 to 36 International, 32 Ford car. And then I think those are a pair of 33, 34 Ford pickups, commercials, whatever you wanna call it. There's a, like a Ford 2N, 8N, 9N tractor grill. And then there's a Pines winter front for i don't know like a 36 ford something like that something in the mid to late 30s our ls uh, 8 or 1600 bandsaw we use that quite a bit we picked up this cuda parts washer on an auction uh, we need to basically plug it in and fill it up and use it we haven't got around to it i added this pallet racking above our water tank over here and it's a good spot to store tires and then i call that my uh display case my toy my toy box keep my tractors up there and igloo coolers and all kinds of cool stuff. Tri powers, you know, the best. And then we got our Bailey bead roller over here. We've used that a couple times. And then our Bailey shrinker stretcher, we used that a couple times. These fender stands, super handy. Um, they're really, they don't take up much space. They don't cost a ton of money. They're portable, versatile. You can throw plywood on them, use it as a table. Pretty good uh, piece of uh, investment. Uh, we did pick up a couple of these engine stands that have the cranks on the back. They're way better. You don't rip your uh, fingers off and they're much more friendly to use. They cost a few more bucks, but way more gooder. Been screwing some stuff to the block wall over here. Got all our belts up there. We put the hub bar sign. We got some brake lines, battery cables, vacuum tubing, fuel tubing. So I try to keep all that stuff on hand because it's pretty common to use and it doesn't take up much space, especially when you buy these racks. I think I got these racks on the old Amazonia. Well, let's go upstairs. I'll give you a quick tour of what we got going on there. Oh yeah, so I hung a square body grill up here. Uh, yeah, some signs. I think that phone was laying on the snow truck at one point. I picked that up at Iola. It was terrible to carry across the swap me grounds. Everybody's yelling, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Well, football helmet, caddy batwing air cleaner, 90 fin Buick drum. I think there's a 45 over there. Got some hose clamps, some exhaust gaskets. You know, header flanges, got to have those on hand. More gaskets. But yeah, this is all storage up here. Tons of totes. I put these shelving units up here. So this is exhaust stuff, 12 volt stuff, 12 volt stuff. Fuel hose, more fuel hose, fuel lines, fuel caps, brake stuff, brake stuff. Moving blankets, all this stuff. It's out of sight, out of mind. It's organized. If you're looking for something, you just come up here, you grab the tote grab what you need or you take the whole tote down got a bunch of fuel filters oil filters hydraulic filters wheel studs you name it a couple of Stromberg 97 carburetors some gaskets over there I got a bunch of fin aluminum valve covers I need to hang up someday got a bunch of shocks fuel pumps 
Some radiators, grills, all kinds of overflow ends up up here. Same deal back here, there's a bunch of filters we gotta label and put away. And then more totes back here. And then over here we got a bunch of specialty tools. There's a valve seat grinder. Uh, there's our metal circular saw. The old homo zone electrical deodorizer that Mojo brought out. Thing works pretty good. Oil filter sockets, um, tap and die sets, uh, crimpers for hydraulic hoses or uh, brake line or brake lines. Yeah, brake lines. That's up here. Pullers. You name it. Just kind of all the stuff that we don't use real often. So it's out of the way. This is a really nice area to just get stuff up out of the way. I spent a lot of time organizing all this, and so it's it's really handy to utilize the space as best we can. You got a couple of Muncies and Saginaws and Super T10s hiding over there. Got some square body sheet metal parts that came with a project that we probably should put on something someday. Sometimes you can just sit up here and look at the mess we got going on. Like, oh hey, we got a rollback. Uh, I think that pallet racking's been in here for quite a while, but we put that in there. That's once we need to do a better job organizing that, but we got a few totes over there. You can see a bunch of totes that we got to fill up yet. Picked up that tire rack at an auction sale, and we've been filling that with tires, clearly. We got ourselves a tire, whatever, water tank for checking leaks. That's been pretty handy. I just picked up that uh, Monroe cabinet. Yeah. Get a nice view of the shop from up here. It's good for taking aerial photos as well. All right, let's go back downstairs and see what we got going on. Make sure you turn the lights off. It was kind of dark in this corner over here, so, you know, I got to show off the toy box. We put in another LED light over here. These round LED lights, they're real good. I like them. They're super bright, super easy to wire in, and they're pretty dang affordable, in my opinion. We got a pile of trash cans around here because uh, you don't want to have to walk 100 and 20 feet across the shop to uh, throw stuff away. I put a bunch of one by fours on this wall and then you can see we've been hanging up some banners and some signs and some cool stuff. That's that 389 Pontiac. This is the pump we pump our water into our tank with. That is a giant pain. I wish we could uh, get some real water plumbed in here. I have two guys come and look and neither of them called me back with even a quote. So that's awesome because it would be nice to get rid of that tank. And I think what we're gonna do is extend that mezzanine at some point just to utilize that space better, to get more stuff up top and be less of a catch-all over there. Uh, we modified my cherry picker. We put a little bit longer arm on it. It's no longer extendable, but it's a lot beefier arm now. So we just took the old arm and uh, basically made a new one that's a little bit longer and heavier because you'd always be ramming into the uh, car that you're pulling the engine out with the back of that ram. And we put a air over hydraulic ram on it. So that makes things a little bit easier. There's that water tank like I was talking about, putting tires in there and finding leaks because we fix tires a lot. Pressure washer came with the shop. That thing is super awesome. We use the ever-living snot out of that for cleaning up engines and just washing cars. I hung a rim up up here for putting the hose on and then I put this American racing wheel cover thing around it. We don't need that anymore. We're going back to the Chrysler hubcap. Got a little mirror in here so you can see who's coming in to the shop when you're back here. I don't know what we're calling this, the office, the merch room, whatever. I just picked up these cabinets, got to hang them up. I put uh, one by four on the wall to hang up all those cabinets. We haven't populated those yet. We got some merch in those totes up there. Uh, I want to hang up some more cabinets here. I think this table, unfortunately, is going to go because it's kind of a waste of space and probably put at least some pallet racking going this way or a little bit this way to get some more stuff in here. Because again, it's kind of a catch-all. Distributing machines in here, uh, table saw whiteboard we've been doing some kind of merchandise on this table so this is all shirts that are getting shipped out to go to the winners that guessed may 10th i think there was 26 of you uh that are getting your shirts coming here shortly for guessing when the grape concord on mount mortsky melted and touched the ground so yeah all those are going out tomorrow so that'll be a good trial run for shipping stuff out and uh you know Figuring out our process. Of course, the bathroom was too big, so we uh, put some more pallet racking in here and then got some more totes. And then this is mostly uh, electrical 110, 220 stuff for when my cousin comes and wires up the shop and then a bunch of ignition stuff. You know, you gotta have your TP, that good stuff. Tons of spark plugs. People have been sending us spark plugs. We've been buying spark plugs on sale. So spark plugs, spark plugs, spark plugs. Um, these are all the new shirts that just came in with the uh, Mountain Dew logo. And then there's some more cabinets we gotta hang up. I do a little bit more organizing in here, but 
we're utilizing it. We got our battery rack in here, storing our batteries in here. We're getting low, so we need some battery sponsors, which also you can buy on Morsky.com. Make sure you put your nickname in there that you want on your battery too, though. So yeah, that's what we're doing is filling the, bat the bathroom up with stuff because, you know, we got lots of stuff. Uh, I think that bolt rack is going to Chin's new shop once he gets that up because it's got lock washers and I hate lock washers. Hopefully he can utilize that. It's a nice little storage bin, but I don't have room for it. Don't need it. There's the Weld Pro Stars. I think we found a, a home for those, actually. Got some bias plies. A couple sets came on an auction. I think we got a home for at least one set of those. Man, like I said, I've been going berserk. Every time I go to Menards, I buy about 25 or 30 of those things because they're so handy. Uh, we got a couple of these wooden crates. That one's all full of 63 parts we got to put on that car. There's going to be a bunch of extra stuff. And then this one we put on wheels and then put a couple handles on here. And we got some steel drops in there so when we're fabricating stuff we just wheel this out grab what we need push right back in pretty slick uh pick this big four ton napa jack up on an auction we need to rebuild it one day when we get caught up we got some six lug rally wheels we got to paint and mount up uh, i built this steel rack quite a while ago in the old shop and then uh yeah that's pretty full could use a bigger one but we can steal a lot of stuff out of that when we're doing fabricating and whatnot Somebody sent us, I think her last name was Kirby, I assume her, but sent us this thing. I was like, you're going to send us a Prolux vacuum cleaner and your last name is Kirby? And they said, we can't afford Kirby. But yeah, this vacuum cleaner has been really handy. It's like wall mounted, doesn't have any wheels, but it's got a really long cord on it. So, so as long as you've got a vehicle parked close to it, again, need to keep this open. Of course, this thing is dead because... We don't buy anything that runs. We've bought more shop vacs or gotten more shop vacs in the last year than I think I have in my entire life. This torch came with the shop. So we just call this Mojo's torch. I don't know what brand this is, but I don't like it. It doesn't like me. So the feeling is, is mutual. I don't know if it's a Harris or what it is. It's definitely not a Smith. I like my Smith torch to each their own. It's handy having two once in a while. Got the old white casper out this thing's 4.3 is an oil chuchin son of a gun i think it's got a vacuum leak revs really high i don't know what we're gonna do with this thing it didn't hardly get driven last year it's not a bad little pickup but it it needs an engine so i'm torn if i put a 350 in it or if i ls it or what i do so comment down below what you think we should do with old casper here and do we put a six liter and a 4l 80e in it or do we just drop a 350 and leave the turbo 400 behind it or what do we do I don't know. And it needs some rust repairs. This was actually where the body panels come from. It's a pretty good pickup though, I don't mind it. More trash cans, grinders, belt sanders, drill press. My dad didn't have room for this blast cabinet. He said he didn't use it much. He said, yeah, you try it out, see if you like it. And so I guess we've uh, made that our home, right Duff? This thing's pretty handy. Mojo uses it a fair amount. This is kind of Mojo's welding table. He's always dealing around with something over here. These cord reels, I think we put those up. I don't know if we did it for the first shop tour, but Flexzilla, they make really good hoses and electrical cords. I like their stuff other than that green is kind of hideous and it gets dirty right away. We got the old 140 and the 200 millers sitting over here. We use those quite a bit. Pick this set of cabinets up on an auction and got a whole bunch of hardware on an auction. So this is really well stocked up with coarse thread sae hardware fine thread sae just a pile of stuff a whole bunch of uh, button head cap screws yeah and then roll pins cotter keys and we haven't even filled the bottom yet yeah a lot of good stuff in there of course you know you gotta have the beer fridge that thing is overly full and we got plenty of beer on top of it so we need to uh, do a little bit better job of consuming sandwiches around here, Duff. The old F1, we're slowly kind of picking away on that in the background as well. I don't know if you've noticed, but we need to uh, get that 63 done, and then I think we'll thrash on that a little bit harder to get that on the lift. We got to get, I don't even know where we got to go. This thing just, I can't get excited about it for some reason, but we'll get her done. 92 is working good. We've been bombing around on that. We had the AC working, and then it quit working. Now I think we got it working again. Um, did a little bit of cleaning on the interior, put a seat cover on it, put some new door seals in it. I really like this pickup. This thing is good, ain't it, Duff? Got a power steering link that we got to fix on it yet, so I think we're going to put a power steering pump on it. 
Went to a swap meet. We'll talk about that stuff in another video. This bench here, I want to redo it, make it a little bit higher and then deeper. We use it a lot. Uh, it's we keep a lot of our like small parts kits underneath here. You know, fuses, grease zerks, uh, electrical, brake fittings, pipe thread fittings, yada, yada, yada. Like I said, it's too low for me and I'd like it to be a little bit deeper. It's, it's a little bit shallow. So, and then the lighting is done with Romex, which apparently isn't ideal. And the lighting should be over the bench because when I'm standing right here, it, I cast a shadow on what I'm working on. So that kind of sucks. So we're going to do something with some lighting there. Yeah, this pegboard's pretty handy. I wasn't a pegboard fan before. I just hated pegboard. I didn't like wrenches on pegboard, but <laughs> it's pretty handy. And Duff is hungry. So you're going to show him where your treats are at, Duff? Can you say hi? Okay, there you go. And yeah, we got some batteries we're trying to rejuvenate after the winter because everything died over the winter, apparently. That's what batteries do around here. Picked up a couple of these flammable cabinets on auctions as well. So we keep uh, most of our gasoline and aerosols and all that good stuff in these things. Safety, you know. Yes, I'm aware that Brent's shop at Half-Ass Customs burned down. It's a bad deal. Brent and I have been in communication. Everybody's like, oh, you need to do something about it. I don't know what I can do. I'm in contact with, with Brent. I told him anything he needs, let me know. It's, it's a super bad deal. It couldn't have happened to a worse guy, and it couldn't have happened to a better guy. Because, I mean, Brent would literally give anybody the shirt off his back, but at the same time, he's the type of guy who is taking it in stride and he's just like hey it's all just stuff i mean it's all replaceable stuff nobody got hurt none of the dogs got hurt so i mean at the end of the day it's a terrible terrible situation it's a bad deal but i would be looking for a short rope and a tall tree if that happened to me i mean not joking i would be completely devastated and wouldn't know how to deal with my life but um brent's taking it in stride so yeah uh Go out, there's a, there's a link on his website if you guys want to donate. Um, there's been a ton of donations going through, and that is awesome because uh, he deserves it. So, like I said, we've been in communication with him, and we'll help Brent in any way that we can. But everyone's like, oh, do a fundraiser. Well, if I, if I take donations through here, then i got to pay taxes on them, and then i got to get them to him, and then he's going to have to pay taxes on them. So it's like just do it all through his site and just let him handle it. And let us, we got to keep making videos on our end. He doesn't want anybody, you know, to, to whatever, shut down their operation to, you know, he, he wants everybody to keep going too. So I don't know what I'm trying to say, but a lot of people, I, I just been, the comments really rubbed me wrong. They're like, oh, you're not, people are like, oh, you're not, you're not doing anything to help Brent. It's like, how do, how do you know what I'm not, what I am or am not doing on my end? Um, and, and the biggest thing that I've learned, I, I know a lot of BoomTube, he had a shop fire, my cousin had a shop fire. Um, some derby guys up the road, they've had a shop fire. It happens all the time. So the biggest thing that we need to learn is to be safe. You know, if you're running a torch, make sure you you hang around, have a beer, sit in the shop, make sure everything's cool before you shut her down or push the car out for the night or whatever the parts are or hose them down with water. Um, don't leave battery chargers hooked up when you leave. I don't leave um, batteries on the charger, like these small ones, like I take those off every night once they're charged up. Unplug our Cyclops lights when we leave for the night. Yeah, don't leave car batteries on. Don't leave the tanks on on the torches. You know, just, just be responsible. Keep your gas cans in flammable cabinets. Get yourself a flammable cabinet. I know these things are expensive, but for what one of these costs, you cannot replace a shop, so. Get yourself one of these or, or, you know, build something, whatever. Rant over. I really feel bad about what happened to Brent. Um, Brent's a good friend of mine. Uh, we hung out down in Austin, Texas, which is, he was on his way home from there when it all happened. So, um, super great dude. Like I said, I'd do anything for him. So when he gives us a call and he wants us to come up there and help him or he wants some equipment or whatever we can do, we're going to help him out. So that being said, yeah, go check out his stuff. If you're not aware of Brent, it's half ass Customs up there in Manitoba. And yeah, super cool dude. He makes something out of nothing all the time. I mean, that guy can 
scrounge and salvage. And like I said, he's he's perfect guy for this to happen to. I mean, it's a bad deal, but he's going to come back and he's going to build a shop and it's going to be better than it ever was. Back to our shop tour. Uh, tire balancer has always been there. We got this Ford tailgate we got to hang up when we're hanging stuff up. I finally mounted my tire machine to the ground because I got sick of chasing it around. I never knew where I wanted it in the old shop or this shop. Finally, I'm just like, heck with it. We're going to put lags in the, in the floor. Excuse me. And if we got to move it, we'll just cut them off. So this thing's super good. I do like it by the door because if you're dragging in dirty wheels and tires, you're not dragging it all the way across the shop. I got this air jack from Vivor and not a paid promotion, but this thing is super good, especially for like really low cars or X frame cars. You can slide that thing way underneath. You hook up the air, psh, lifts up. It's good for lazy people like me. That's what I'm getting at. Another trash can, sandwich cooler. Co rat came with the shop. That thing's been super handy as well. Telehandler, that thing's been super handy. I didn't really plan on keeping this thing. I was just gonna turn, a, turn it and uh, make a couple bucks, but after having it, I don't know how I'd live without it. Super handy. Uh, we gotta hang this up, Puddin. He made us a, a saw sign finger. I don't know what you wanna call it, but we gotta hang that up yet. I was actually hanging it up one day and just never got it done. Need to do it. Need to get a scissor lift back. Mojo, of course, is employee of the month, so we got him a sign. We even got him a, a parking spot out here. I don't know if I picked this up when we got the F4 truck from Snooch and the Snooch Rocket. You know, we got Mojo his own parking spot over here. Don't look at that thing. Can't look at that thing. Oh, Hanson boys are doing some field work out here. Somebody come buy that Mercury so I can stop looking at it. That's a really good car. And it's just going to rot away in the yard. What else we got to show them, Duff? Give him a tour of the yard. Well, yeah, I don't know what else we did in the yard. Uh, there was a storage building back here. We concreted that out and we put some pallet racking in there. We got some cars in there, some stuff in there. Uh, we picked up another 500 gallon fuel tank. So we got fuel and then we just bought a whole bunch of cars and just filled the yard up. And we got one tow of used oil left. So we need uh, to find some used oil for next winter because we went through about 2,500 gallons. And we got about, you know, 500 gallons to start us out for next winter. So we got to figure that out. We've had some trespassers, so we got to put up signs. We did uh, press charges on one individual who was asked to not come back and then did come back. So, yeah, don't show up unannounced. It's a, what is it, Class B misdemeanor, $200 fine. And if you, again, within a year or two or get in trouble within a year or two, then, the, then it goes up to being a felony. So, yeah, not a good deal. Don't show up at my place or anybody else's place unannounced, you know, because this is this is my domain. And I know you guys feel like you know me and you, and you do, but I don't know you. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then when my cousin was here, he he wired this lift up and then he put some 110 outlets on here and then a 220 so we can plug in our welder. That's nice. We got a pretty good radius here in the middle. What else, Duff? Oh, we picked up this sweet bumper air jack out in Rapid City. And we got to put a caster wheel on it. That's what I was doing here before I pulled out the uh, camera. Yeah, that thing's going to be good. The reason I got it is for picking that thing up high enough so that we can get the arms for the lift underneath it because you can't get the arms underneath it. Who knows? It'll probably just collect dust and then sit outside and I'll find a new home. But the price was right. The gentleman gave it to us for free. So, yeah. And it's freaking ginormous, so I think it would lift motorhomes because we like motorhomes yeah just go ahead grab yourself another treat what the heck why not yeah then of course i think on the second channel we showed you know i hung a bunch of these grills up to get them out of the way and it's really cool to look at and i like grills i painted that international one up but other than that we don't really paint anything then i put that hub bar sign up i got a couple more signs that i want to put on top of that cinder block wall wildfire i owe those guys a shout out but i want to do it in the 63 video so wildfire Awesome guys, awesome product. That's the 9000 XLT, so it's a little bit wider and longer, and then I think it lifts higher. So I would recommend getting that one because the height is awesome. That's what I don't like about this. I wish this thing went up like another six inches higher. It's, I'm not a super tall guy, but I wish it went up just a little bit higher. If you were like 5'8", this thing would be perfect. But for me, a little bit higher would be nice. Old reliable toolbox used to sit up against the wall around here. Actually, we got some room to move around, so I do move it around a little bit. 
These Master Force Toolbox, I think they cheapened them up since I got this. I think they don't have six wheels, they just got four. And then they got plug-ins on the end. And I don't know if you can get the stainless steel tops anymore, but I would highly recommend one of these. If you see one come up locally for sale, pick it up. I think I paid like 1100 bucks for this thing with a top in 2016 or so. And now they're, like I said, they cheapened them up and they're twice that now. And you can't get this stainless top anymore, but pretty good unit. Uh, that table kind of floats around in here and we do some project stuff. And like those are the spare disc brakes for the Buick that we won't use. Those are some spare 58 to 64 Chevy disc brakes that we'll put on something someday. We got some starters going on here for the 63. And a bunch of our, got all our starter bolts out, so ready to do that. There's the vintage air, old air, old air. It's old air, old air AC to put in that thing because Duff likes riding air conditioning. You don't care what we do as long as we go for rides. Maybe that's what we should do tonight. Is it too windy to go for a ride? Never. So there you have it. We've been in this location for a year. Uh, things that I would change. I don't like the floor in here. I had a really nice concrete floor in my old shop and this floor slopes really bad. It's cracked out. It's, it's been used and abused. So there's some spots. Uh, so the concrete floor isn't as nice. Um, that forest air furnace makes a crap ton of noise. I wish this thing had water plumbed in like real water. So I don't have to deal with that water tank. The used oil stuff is kind of a hassle. It's free, but it's really not by the time you get your time involved and we got to send that burner off and get it serviced every year. Uh, floor heat is the way to go for us. I wish this place had air conditioning. I wish the doors were on that side of the building so we could have multiple, you know, several doors where like I said, this, this corner is kind of a catch all because you can't drive through. And we, I feel like we're not utilizing the space over here because I'm worried about having dead stuff. I don't know. I think doors going in your long walls is the way to go. Uh, I do like the added ceiling height, obviously, so we can put lifts in here, like the old, sh or in, as opposed to the old shop. But then again, we're not really utilizing a lot of the wall space and stuff like that, so we need to get some pallet racking. I do like that we have the additional room. The mezzanine over there is awesome. Uh, the sidewall height so that we can put pallet racking in there is awesome. Getting all those totes and getting my life organized. Moving from one shop to the other, super good to, uh, do a little bit of purging and organizing and be like, oh man, I had two of these or, or, oh, I forgot I even had this or we need to work on that project again. But at the same time, it's made me accumulate some more projects since I'm more organized and I have more room now. I've picked up a lot more stuff. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, I'd like to have a, a bigger mezzanine, uh, better concrete floor heat so the sound quality would be better in the winter and then have it like geothermal would be freaking awesome but it's it's super expensive uh yeah those overhead doors are bigger than i need so they let a lot of heat out and then they kind of whistle in the wind and they're older so i don't know what's going to happen long term i'd like to add on to this shop and have like a smaller work area and then you know work in there because this is the sound quality isn't the most amazing and all right battery died on the gopro so where was i at uh, like i said long term this isn't having anytime soon but i would like to put like maybe like a 40 by 80 shop up this is 40 by 120 or maybe even like 50 or 60 by 80 with uh the doors going the same direction but the building going the opposite way and have floor heat and spray foam insulation and geothermal and all that good stuff but we're not going to be there anytime soon and yeah the water runs in underneath the doors over here when it rains or when it snows and it melts and it just runs across the shop floor there's no floor drains on this half of the shop they're all in the new half of the shop this half was built in the 60s and that half was built in the 90s stuff like that uh, we did put a lot of the lighting in here and that has been a, a huge improvement what else are we missing you're you're bored sick of me walking around talking Ooh, a crane, like a swinging crane or an overhead crane would be nice. I don't know what for. We sold the forklift that we had. A nice little electric forklift would be pretty handy to have. Overall, I'm really happy. I'm super stoked to be out of town. Now I can drag stuff home and I don't have the city or the neighbors, anybody getting after me, I can do whatever I want. If people want to complain about it when they drive by, then tough luck. I can do whatever I want in my domain. 
Uh, I wish I was a little bit further away from the highway. You can hear a lot of the road noise and you know, people are always snooping, seeing what you're doing. Um, I don't have a lot of grass to mow, so that's nice. I uh, used to enjoy mowing grass, now it's like an inconvenience to find time to do it. There's a lot of room out here that's graveled, so that's nice for turning around with trailers and storing cars. You don't have weeds and everything growing in the grass. Uh, we've been doing a little work in the trees back here to park some more cars, so we gotta do some more shuffling around. Been looking into some storage containers, you know, to like store tires and wheels and, you know, engines and transmissions and stuff like that that we don't have here. I still have a lot of stuff in town at the old place that I would like to have here and then I would like to sell those properties um, so I can stop paying city taxes on that stuff because that sucks paying taxes on that. Taxes out here are way more affordable than they are in town. And I get it, I don't have curb and gutter, I don't have city sewer, I don't have snow removal, all that stuff. So it is what it is, but I'm, I'm super happy being out of town. Anything else, Duff? I think that's about it. I'll remind, I'll, rem I'll remember later what I was gonna say. So there you have it. Uh, this is our one year anniversary shop tour of the old Mortski Worldwide shop. Thank you very much for watching. Check out the merch in the links, multiple links below Mortski.com and then the uh, Shopify link, which has a little bit more selection on the uh, clothing. But if you could get it from Mortski.com, we would much appreciate it. We're, we're trying to go gung ho on this, trying to do like Puddin does. He, He's kind of who we modeled our uh, business model after. He does a really great job of it. He's got some really great products. And uh, yeah, I uh, heard a lot of good stuff about it. I see his stuff everywhere. So I mean, that man is killing it. I don't foresee us being anywhere where he's at, but I mean, if we get there, that would be great. But we're just uh, dipping our toes in the water and we're gonna go from there. So remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you were having fun. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun in the new shop. So I appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, that's what keeps this place running, keeps the lights on. What does Tom Bodette say? Motel 6, we'll keep the light on for you. I'm Tom Bodette from Motel 6 and we'll leave the light on for you. All right, we should probably start working on something. What do you want to work on?